Hi, welcome to another video for Algebra 2. In this video, we're going to be discussing sine functions and how to graph them. Well, actually, this is a series of sine, cosine, and tangent, but we're only going to discuss sine function in this one. So what you see there on the left is the parent function of a sine graph. And I'm going to show you how this sine graph relates to our unit circle that we've memorized. This is the parent function, which is y equals a sine times b theta. Our a represents the amplitude, and our b is used to find the period, or the full cycle, of, uh, of our graph. So again, this is the uh, parent function, and let's just assume that a is 1 and b is 1. So that means that our amplitude is 1 and our cycle, our period, is a full 360. So if you look at how it relates, how we graph this on a uh, coordinate plane and how it relates to the unit circle, you remember that the unit circle has a maximum and minimum of 1 on the x on the x axis and on the y axis, right? So that means if our a was greater than 1, then our circle would widen to, uh, let's say if it was 2, then it would widen to 2 units. It would be 2 units on the positive side and 2 units on the negative side on both the x and y axis. But again, this is just, let's just assume that it's 1. So the first part, the first coordinate, if you look at the unit circle, the coordinate for, or, or the value for theta at 0 degrees is 0. So remember that sine theta equals y in our coordinate plane. So our sine theta at the 0 degree uh, coordinate equals 0. So then we plot our point at 0. Then if you go to the 90 degree, Okay, if you go to the 90 degree point on our unit circle, sine theta at that point equals 1. So then that would be our point up on our unit circle, uh, up on our uh, coordinate plane on the left. Now also notice that I've highlighted in green the points from the 0 to the 1 on my graph and on my unit circle. So those points essentially um, equal the points that are on the unit circle as well. It's the same points. I'm just graphing them differently as opposed to the unit circle coordinates on the unit circle, there are points on my graph. So then if I continue on in my unit circle and on my graph, on my unit circle at the point of 180, my theta is again 0. And you'll notice on my graph that I go back to the 0. So it's crossing the y-axis at that point, or the x-axis, sorry. Okay, and again, I'm highlighting the line that's showing those coordinate points and how they relate, the, how the graph relates to the unit circle. It's the same thing. I'm just representing this data in a different way. Uh, as opposed to the unit circle, which I've memorized, I'm now graphing it. And then if I go to the 270, theta 270, I notice that my sine theta is negative 1. And then I graph it likewise. And then, of course, as I finish up on 360, it goes back to 0. And there's my full sine theta graph. Okay? So this is my y equals sine theta um, function, how it looks on the graph, and how it relates to the unit circle. Now, to find my period, let's say my b is a different number and my a is a different number, but if my b is a different number, the way I find the period of that particular sine graph is I do 360 degrees divided by whatever my b uh, coefficient is, okay? So one cycle has a length of 360 degrees if my b equals 1. Okay, and it's from 0 degrees to 360 degrees. Now to locate my x-intercepts, where this graph intersects the x-axis, I can use these three points. So my first point is always going to be 0, 0, because if, if you go back to the unit circle, um, at 0 degrees, sine always equals 0. So my first point will be at 0, 0. And then my other point, where it crosses the x-axis, is going to be 360 divided by 2 times b. And then my third point will be 360 uh, divided by b. And those are the three points at which my sine graph will cross the x-axis. And that's how I locate my x-intercepts. This, this formula works for any sine graph that I have. All I got to know is know what my b coefficient is, and then I can use this. Okay, so let's do an example here. Find the amplitude, the period, and the x-intercepts, and then I want to graph. So to find my amplitude, I just look at my equation, my function, and in the A position, I have a 2. And in the B position, I don't have anything there, but it's just an assumed 1, so B equals 1. 
So I have my amplitude, I have my period. Okay, and this, my amplitude 2 is 2. I'm sorry, my amplitude is 2, so that graph is stretched, stretched vertically so that the maximum value is 2 and the minimum value is negative 2. Okay? So now I want to find my x-intercepts, and if you recall, I used that, the formula that I gave you earlier. Okay, this, this is the formula to finding my x-intercepts. So the first one's easy, 0, 0, right? And the second one, I know that my value for b is 1, so I can input 1 for all of my v's, and then I can just do the arithmetic, and I know 360 divided by 2 is 180, and 360 divided by 1 is 360, and there it is. Those are, my, those are now my x-intercepts, and I can just plot my points at that point. But I'm not done yet, right? I want to find what my other points are, and recall that at the 90 degree, at 90 degrees theta, my y, my y uh, value, or my sine value is 1, Oh, in this case, it's not going to be 1. It's going to be 2 because my amplitude equals 2. So uh, on the right-hand side where it says 0, 1 on my unit circle, it should actually say 0, 2 because my amplitude has increased my, the area that I'm working with. And then, of course, on the other side, it should be negative 2, so I can just plot my point. And there I, have, there I go. I have all my points, and at this point now, I can just connect my dots, if you will, and I have my graph. So I know my amplitude, I know my period, my x-intercepts, and my graph. And this is how I do the sine function graph. Okay, that does it for this particular topic. The next video, we will discuss cosine functions and how those work. Thanks for listening and watching. Good luck in your studying.